من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهدا أمن يمشي أمن يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I've just recited one ayah to you today, which is ayah number 22 from Surah Al-Mulk, continue, continue, continuing with the tafsir of Surah Al-Mulk. Today, inshallah, we'll just look at this one ayah, ayah 22. Uh, before we look at this ayah, a brief recap and uh, review of the previous verses that we looked at two, days, two nights ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He speaks about the disbelievers not having, uh, you know, not standing a chance defending themselves against Allah. And Allah refers to that group as Jund, that army, even though they might uh, form and mobilize themselves and their powers into an army, into a Jund, it's nothing in comparison to Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. The disbelievers are nothing but deception and delusion, ghurur. And then Allah says, okay, that's, that's in, in, in terms of challenging Allah using might and power. What about if Allah has to stop and withhold the rizq, his rizq? Is there anyone else that's going to give you the rizq of Allah? And then Allah says, بَلَّجُّوا فِي عُتُوِّ وَنُفُودِ Despite all of these signs that have preceded, including these two, these two verses and other verses, they are stubborn in two things. عُتُو in arrogance and نُفُودِ in fleeing, running away and fleeing from the truth. Okay, that's uh, the previous two verses. Today's ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a rough translation, He says, أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبَّنَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ So, is the one who walks... Is the one who walks continuously tripping forward on his face r more rightly guided than the one may yamshi sawiyan ala sirat mustaqim than the one who walks upright on a straight path? So again, this is a very profound, profound ayah. Allah says, So is the one who walks continuously tripping and falling on his face, face flat, more rightly guided than the one who walks upright, straight on a, st upon a straight path. So this is a short ayah. But in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cites and Allah provide, provides a very profound, very deep and a powerful um, example, a powerful parable. Allah is comparing two characters in this ayah. There's a contrast between two characters in this ayah. And I'm sure like many of us guessed it, one character, the first character, the one who walks, falling, you know, continuously tripping and falling flat on his face is the disbeliever. And the one who walks upright on a straight path is the believer. So the question Allah is posing, in light of all of the verses since the beginning, the blessed nature of Allah in the first ayah, the absolute dominion and power of Allah over all things, Allah creating death, Allah creating life, creating us, our pur the purpose for creation is to test us, uh, Allah, Allah sees whose deeds are better, and then Allah creating the seven heavens layered, not finding any flaws and any gaps in the any deficiencies in the in the creation of Allah and then Allah speaking about the stars that he's, he's beautified the heavens so his creation is not only perfect systematic and organized it is also beautiful like he's beautified the stars and then Allah speaks about the punishment uh, that is meted out against the disbelievers be they the jinn the shayateen or the human beings there's a long description of them uh, you know of that punishment and then Allah speaks about how he is uh, you know his, his blessings on the believers um, and how he takes care of the believers likewise then Allah speaks about how he is uh, you know, he's humiliated and humbled the earth. Why? So we could tread and we could trod on it and uh, we could search for his provisions and his sustenance on the earth. And our ultimate resurrection is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the disbelievers might be of thinking that, okay, there was a long, lengthy description of the punishment of hellfire. Let them not be deluded into thinking that's hellfire. Who knows? What if it's, what if it's a reality? What if it's just a, you know, thumb suck, as they say? What if it's just a fairy tale? Allah says, okay, leave, let's leave the punishment in the hereafter on hold for a minute. What if Allah decides to sink you in the earth? Where are you going to go? What if Allah decides to rain down upon you stones from the skies? Who's going to protect you from that? And then Allah reminds people of history. Don't forget history. You know, they say, for a few years I taught history at, at A level, right? I taught history. So at the beginning, the first lesson I used to speak about the importance, the significance and the importance of history. Because there's some theories that suggest that we don't need history. Why are we always dwelling in the past? Let's focus, you know, let's focus on the future. So it's to all, you know, obviously there's, there's, there's a logical, rational, and powerful argument against that fallacious statement. But on a lighter note, I have to say to them that there was this boy, this young boy, uh, you know, he comes home 
he had a, he learned a new statement from his teacher in school. So he comes home and he says to his dad, Dad, my teacher said history repeats itself. And you must have heard this; it's quite popular, right? Uh, so he says, Dad, my teacher said history repeats itself. Why does he keep on repeating itself? Why does he repeat itself? So the dad, in a very humble, uh, you know, manner, stooping down to the level of the child, says to the child, Son, the reason history repeats itself is because we weren't listening the first time around. The first time when it took place, we weren't listening. So that's why it keeps on repeating itself. So Allah speaks, Allah reminds about history. Don't forget the people before you. All right? The Ad and the Thamud and the Qawm of Lut and all of these powerful, more powerful, more popular, more wealthy civilizations than you and how did Allah deal with them when they rejected their prophets and they poked fun at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not too long ago Allah sent down birds to protect his house right in your presence and you were protected because of that so don't forget all of that and then Allah speaks about this army is there do you have an army that can protect you against Allah is there anyone that's going to give you rizq if Allah withholds his uh, his sustenance and if Allah withholds his rizq now in this ayah Allah provides this parable this powerful profound parable and Allah says, so after all of this then, now you tell me, who is, who is the one that is more rightly guided? The one who keeps on continuously tripping and falling, you know, face flat <coughs> on the ground? Or the one who walks upright, stable, on a straight path? You choose. From this parable, which, which one is the one that is more likely to reach his or her destination? The one who keeps on falling flat, stumbling on the face, hurt, being hurt all the time? Or the one who walks upright? And on top of that, the individual is walking on a straight path. So that's the overall rough translation of this ayah. Now, how is this ayah? Before we explain this ayah, uh, look at, you know, before we look at a few significant points in this ayah, let's look at the relationship. How is this ayah related to the previous verses? Let's see. So in this ayah, Allah, prov Allah gives a parable of two characters, two individuals. The one who can't walk properly, who keeps on tripping and keeps on falling, and each time the individual falls, is hurt because he or she is falling you know, on the face, Right, face meets the ground and then there's the other individual who knows how to walk who's walking upright and is on the right path so Allah says okay let's start off with ayah number 20 the rhetorical question in there which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so do you have an army you've got these two armies on one side you have Allah and his army and on the other side you have these individuals who think they can challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which one is going to be more useful in the battleground the one who walks upright who's got a good posture and his who has his or her priorities right or the one who in the thick of the battlefield keeps on tripping and falling on the face. Which one's going to help you? Number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah when he speaks about his rizq. Okay, how is this ayah related to that ayah then? The one who knows. Okay, the one who's got the knowledge, who's got the experience. Okay, the know-how of getting the rizq and the provisions of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the example of the one who knows the straight path, who knows what to get, got the priorities right. And then you have others, you know, who knows how, you know, about savings and finances and things. And then you have the other individual who keeps on falling flat. Every, every transaction they make, they're always falling flat. They, you know, they, they're being scammed and they're losing and uh, they, they, they don't know how to save money. You know, anything new that comes out, they're purchasing it and they're blowing their money. And at the end of the month, they have nothing. So, you know, which, which, which one's the more right, which, which one's more, you know, more sound minded? So that's the connection. But let's look at this profound contrast that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes between these two individuals, these two characters, the, beliefs, the believers and the disbelievers. Let's look at the disbeliever first because that's what Allah starts off with. And Allah says, so the disbeliever is the one who yamshi mukibban ala wajhi, who walks mukibban continuously all the time, tripping, and when the person trips, they fall, you know, landing on the face. So, firstly, that's the disbeliever. Let's, let's, let's look at what this means. What's the imagery that's being painted? Firstly, the individual, doesn't, to begin with, doesn't even know how to walk. Let alone walking. Or let alone the destination or where they're walking, the path. The individual doesn't even know how to walk. Number one. Number two, the individual is blind. Number three, the individual... The individual... Number three, the individual doesn't know the way, doesn't know the path. And number four, actually, the path leads to destruction. Number five, the, the path is not a smooth, straight path. It's, 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 it's like a very rough, rocky terrain. Okay. Next point, these are all of the factors that then lead this individual to trip. 
And when this person trips, it's not a trip where the person survives the trip. Each time the person trips, because of all of these factors, not knowing the path, a lot of distractions, rough terrain, the path being a wrong path, leading to distraction, all of these things, the person being blind, also there's darkness, there's no light to there. Now, due to all of these factors, the person keeps on tripping and falling. And each time the person trips, it's a severe trip. The person falls flat, straight on the face. And every time the individual gets hurt. After every fall, the person wakes up with less energy, more injured. Is there any chance of this person reaching his or her destination? Absolutely none. Absolutely, because firstly, the path is the wrong path. It's not going to lead to the destination. It's actually leading to destruction, opposite to where the person wants to go. And then all of the other factors, there's no light, it's dark, it's scary, the person is blind, uh, the person doesn't even know how to walk, so you know, the person keeps on tripping and falling, there's no energy, but by the time the person reaches the perceived destination, the person, person individual's already passed out. So that's the example, that's, that's one individual. And then you have the other individual on the other hand, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, May yamshi sawiyan. This person walks upright. The example of the other, the other was actually the image that's used is mukibban. In addition to what I've explained, Allah says mukibban. When the person walks, the person walks bending forwards. So keep all of the other factors in mind, blind and darkness and the path being, you know, not, not a smooth path and it's, it, you know, wrong path leading to destruction. But the person himself, not knowing how to walk, what does that mean? Mukibban, the person walks bending forwards. Now when you bend forward, hypothetically, even if, even if there was light and even the person was sighted, if you bend forward, what happens? Can you see what's in front of you? No, you see what's, what's below you. You can't even see what's on your right, what's on your left. Forget, you know, uh, perceiving some danger or some threat from behind, from the rear. So that's one character. And then the other one, Allah says, this individual walks zawiyan, upright, knows how to walk, posture is absolutely brilliant. And then the person sighted, the person knows the path, the person knows the path is leading to the uh, you know the ultimate destination and then on top of that Allah says ala sirat mustaqim the the path is a straight path there's no distractions it's not leading it's not leading anywhere else there's light the person is sighted so which one of the two is going to reach the destination that's the parable and that's the contrast after all of this from the beginning of surah al-mulk until this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says by now you should an individual with sound intellect and sound mind should be able to conclude that the latter is on the right path and the latter is the suitable individual and the latter is the best character is the best one out of the two and I should try to be the latter and the second individual who is upright walking on the straight path so this in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the parable and he gives the example of the disbeliever and the believer the disbeliever thinks, perceives he or she is on the right path like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا They think they're carrying out and performing great deeds. But when they reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah says, هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا They will find their deeds scattered like dust. And when there's a wind, what happens? It's, it's, it's all over the place. And another surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيَعَةٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءَ Because they're not on the straight path. Because they're not walking thoroughly, they're not walking upright. They think they're on the path, but they're on that path. Allah gives the example, like you know, of a traveler in the desert. Okay, the traveler is traveling long, you know, a long journey, really thirsty, in desperately in need of water. And what does he or she, the traveler, sees in front? They see something that resembles a puddle of water. And the closer they get to that, the further that puddle goes away from them. What is that? That's the mirage. They think it's water. We're going to reach there anytime soon. But the closer they get, the puddle of water is getting further and further from them. Actually, that's not water. They think it's water, but it's not water. And few ayat there after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the example is like what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the example is like the individual that's in the depth of the sea. Above the individual is a huge wave. Above that wave is another wave. And then there's, there's, and then there's, the, uh, there's the clouds. It's dark. لم you know, Allah, say, Allah says that they're in such utter darkness that if they have to take their hands out, they would not be able to see it. Even their own hands, right in front of them, in front of their faces. You know, when there's you know, pitch, 
black darkness and you put your hands in front of your face, you can't see it. That's the example of these individuals. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that, you know, the reason Allah gives this parable is to show that, you know, he is a Rahman. Three times in the surah Allah explains himself and Allah, you know, mentions himself and described himself as Ar-Rahman at the beginning of every surah in fact but in this surah particularly three times the same number of times that he refers to himself with his own personal name Allah so in other words the reason for this is Allah if you see Allah if you think about Allah that is Ar-Rahman in essence Allah is Ar-Rahman and if you're running away and if you're disobeying and transgressing and challenging the Allah who is so merciful and so kind then certainly the only conclusion is these individuals are like the first character who has the road wrong to begin with there's distractions on the road uh, there's the, the road is leading to destruction as well uh, the person doesn't know how to walk they keep on tripping and they keep on falling there's the blindness they don't know the path there's darkness that's the example of these individuals so in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and he poses this question in, in the form of this example in this form of this subtle parable that now you choose which one is more rightly guided which which one is on the right path which one is going to which you know which path and which individual will end up at their correct you know favored favorable destination now one interesting point about this ayah is when Allah speaks about the disbeliever then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention anything about the path all he says is so the one so is the one who walks so the, so is the one who walks continuously tripping on their face nothing about path that's it. More rightly guided than the one who walks upright. So there's an example in the disbeliever that says that he walks tripping and falling on the face. And here the believer, Allah says, upright. So that's fine. We've got these two contrasts and these two examples, right? But then when it comes to the believer, Allah says, Ala siratin mustaqim, walking on a straight path. But when it comes to the disbeliever, Allah doesn't say walking on, you know, walking on the incorrect path. The reason Allah doesn't even mention the path is because if you don't know how to walk and if you keep on tripping and falling, forget about the path. There's no point even mentioning the path. However, when it comes to the believer, even the, because the believer is not perfect either, but the believer has faith and the believer has iman and that iman is nur and that iman is light and that light will push you forward. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu amanu. Allah is the friend of the believers. You know, sometimes we brag when we have like events and things, you know, I, I know this politician, I know this local councillor, I know this MP, I know this CEO. And we feel happy about it. Well, you know the person, you're not that person, but we feel happy because of that, that relationship. Allah says, Allahu waliyu amanu. Allah is the friend of the believers. Why? How does his friendship help? How does the friendship with Allah help? He takes them out from darkness and he leads them into light. And then the disbelievers and their friends, what do they do? How do their friendship benefit them? To use that term, they take them out from the light into a dhulumat, into darkness. So even the believer, okay, at times the believer might trip and the believer might fall. But because the believer is on the right path, the believer will eventually reach the destination. And even if the believer, one of the scholars was saying, even if the believer is like a tortoise, doesn't reach the destination, but the believer is on the right path, is the intention that counts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept as if this individual reached the destination. So this is a very profound and a very powerful ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains you know, to, to the believer and to the disbeliever on you know, which side their loyalties need to be on, which side you know, should they be, and the example of their journey in life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alayhi wa sallam.